Chapter 4, The Civilization of Egypt One of the most interesting and reassuring aspects of the character of God is the fact that he can, he can and does use anything and anyone to accomplish his will. I want to encourage you to go into the study of this chapter about, ancient, about the ancient Egyptian civilization with this fact about his holy character planted firmly in your mind and heart. As the story of the Hebrews, God's chosen people, unfolds, you will learn how he used the Egyptians in various ways to accomplish important aspects of his plan. Nothing in life or history is exactly what it seems on the surface. What first meets the eye often veils something much bigger and more important. Everything is interrelated and interwoven, and everything is in the extremely capable and loving hands of our Almighty God. Perhaps the most well-known ancient civilization in history is the ancient Egyptian civilization. Just like the Sumerians, the Egyptians had a written language. While the Sumerians wrote their wedge-shaped letters with a stylus on a clay tablet, the Egyptians used a type of paper made from papyrus, a reed that grows along the Nile River. Papyrus, the word which we derive our word paper, was also used for woven boats, baskets, shoes, and even furniture. The Egyptians' writing consisted of small pictures drawn to depict a word. This writing is called hieroglyphics, and it has been discovered not only on papyrus scrolls, but also chiseled into the stone walls of palaces and caves. The Egyptians, like Sumerians, were polytheists. They depended upon the Nile River to sustain their lives, and they falsely believed the river was controlled by a mighty god. They had hundreds of gods, even each with an important job to do. Their king, or pharaohs, claimed to be gods who had more power than the other lower gods. Menes was the first true Egyptian king. When the Egyptian civilization first started, the country was divided in half. Menes came from the southern part and conquered the northern part. Menes declared that he was not the only king, not only king, but also a god. The Egyptians feared the gods, so they did whatever they believed would make the pharaoh gods happy. Chief of the gods was Osiris. He was the god of farming and the judge of the dead. Isis was Osiris's wife, and their son, Horus, supposedly had the head of a falcon. The ancient writings of the Egyptians give much more detail about their belief system. One of the strange false beliefs they had was about the afterlife. They believed Osiris weighed the heart of the deceased on a scale. A feather, which represented truth, was placed on the other side of the scale. If the heart was heavy with sin, a monster came and ate it up. It seems strange for us to hear about these people and all their gods. We know that God is the one true God and that he holds all the power, knowledge, and understanding. We know he created all things and he sent his one and only son as a sacrifice for our sins. The ancient Egyptians did not know about God. Their ancestors rebelled against God and eventually the entire nation forgot about him. Instead, their lives were spent trying to make all the various false gods happy. They thought if they made their gods happy, they would not be punished and that they would have a chance for a happy afterlife. The ancient Egyptians also held many animals as sacred. We could fill an entire chapter about this subject alone. Animals, which we have as pets, were worshipped and revered in ancient Egypt. Dogs, cats, certain birds, and even a beetle, called a scarab, were thought to be sacred. If anyone killed or abused a sacred animal, that person could be put to death. There are many scriptures describing the culture of ancient Egypt, and they are interwoven throughout the stories that we'll be studying in the weeks to come. The Egyptians had a society based on classes of people. If you are lucky enough to be born into one of the upper classes, such as priest or government official, you might have a more blessed life. 
If you happen to be born to a farmer, shopkeeper, or merchant, then you were stuck in a life of that class. Not many people tried to move up to a higher class because it wasn't really possible to move up. This doesn't sound like a very hope-filled life, does it? One of the most interesting aspects of the ancient Egyptian culture is how they viewed death. As I mentioned earlier, they believed Osiris was the god who was the judge of the dead. The ancient Egyptians also believed that when they died, their souls stayed close to their body. And because of this, the dead were buried with their most prized possessions. A tomb might contain the deceased cherished pet, their favorite furniture, jewels, money, and even food. They believed the soul would return to the body on judgment day. So they went to extraordinary lengths to preserve the body before burial. In the beginning of this practice of preserving the body, only the upper class could afford to be made into a mummy. This process was extremely long and complicated. After the inner organs, except for the heart, which needed to be weighed against the feather of truth, was removed and placed in jars, the body was soaked in a mineral called natron and wrapped with yards and yards of white cloth. As time went on, even people in the lower classes were able to mummify the dead. This process was very effective in preserving the bodies of many ancient Egyptians. In fact, several of these mummies have been discovered thousands of years later and placed in museums all over the world. Another ancient, another interesting ancient Egyptian custom related to death was how they were buried. When someone died, that person's family and friends heaped stones on top of the grave. The richer and more prominent the person was, the bigger the pile of stones. Each king wanted to make sure his pile of stones was the biggest. So pharaohs started to build their piles even before they died. This is how huge pyramids of Egypt came about. The pyramids were the tombs for kings built for themselves before they died. It has been said that the Egyptian pharaohs were more interested in their lives after death than their lives before death. If you think about how buildings are made today, you know that buildings have all sorts of heavy lifting and building equipment, such as cranes, backhoes, tractors, and bulldozers. The ancient Egyptians did not have any of these things. They built the pyramids by hand. The huge stones used in the construction of these massive structures were dragged for miles and raised in place by men pushing and pulling on them. The greatest of these pyramids is called the Great Pyramid. This pyramid was built by a king named Cheops. It was speculated that this pyramid took 100,000 men 20 years to build. Cheops had a huge sphinx, a statue of a lion with a man's head, built to guard his tomb. This giant statue was to honor the ancient, the ancient Egyptian god of mourning. The shifting and blowing sands of the desert once buried the feet of the Great Sphinx. You can visit this spectacular structure even today. There is nothing in the pyramid now because the mummy of Cheops is not there. After many, many years, the custom of burying the dead with most of their riches became well known all over the world. As the Egyptian civilization declined in its later years, Tomb robbers broke into many of the pyramids and stole their contents. Even though much of the lifestyle and culture of the ancient Egyptians is well known around the world, theirs is a history also full of God's chosen people, the Israelites. Archaeologists have uncovered many detailed writings of the Egyptian way of life, their belief system, their family lines, and their influence on the world around them. Many of the defining moments of their past are outlined in the Bible, woven throughout the story of the Old Testament. In our next chapter, we'll discuss the story of the people of God, called his chosen people, the Israelites, and their ancestor, Abraham. Much like Noah, this man was chosen to begin a new scene in the history of the world. What a fascinating story he has, too. I hope you are ready to dig in and learn. Get your thinking caps ready. We are going to need them soon.